I'm glad you could join us. Go ahead and stab the like button and stick around for the next untold story. Holly, a night shift worker in her local Walmart, had always felt a slight unease working during the late hours. The store, usually bustling with life during the day, transformed into a dimly lit expanse of aisles and products that cast eerie shadows under the flickering fluorescent lights. Most nights, she shrugged off the creepy atmosphere, attributing her feelings to exhaustion and the typical ghost stories circulated among the staff. But tonight was different. It was particularly quiet, and a storm was brewing outside, adding a howling wind to the mix that occasionally rattled the sliding entrance doors. Holly was tasked with restocking the back aisles, the ones that were rarely visited late at night, where seasonal items and overstock were kept. As she pushed her cart filled with boxed items through the store, the lights above her flickered more aggressively than usual. A slight sense of apprehension crept up her spine, but she pressed on, determined to finish her tasks quickly. She reached the back aisles, where the air felt noticeably cooler, and the hum of the overhead fluorescence grew louder. Or perhaps it was just the silence around her that made it seem so. Holly began unpacking boxes when a sudden loud bang from the far end of the aisle made her jump. She froze, listening intently. It sounded as though someone had knocked over a large display. Heart pounding, she hesitated, then grabbed a box cutter for a semblance of protection before slowly walking toward the noise. As she approached, she saw nothing amiss. All displays were intact, and the aisle was empty. Confused, she turned back to her task, trying to shake off the feeling that she was being watched. The lights flickered again, this time leaving her in near darkness for a heart-stopping few seconds before they stuttered back to life. Trying to calm her nerves, Holly reminded herself that it was just a store, just her store, where she'd worked for over a year without incident. But as she resumed unpacking, she distinctly heard the sound of footsteps approaching. They were soft barely audible over the hum of the air conditioning unit. Yet in the silence of the night shift, they sounded like drum beats. She straightened up, clutching the box cutter a little tighter. Hello? She called out, her voice echoing slightly. Is anyone there? Mark, is that you? She half expected one of her co-workers to emerge, perhaps laughing at having spooked her. But no one answered, and the footsteps stopped. The silence that followed was oppressive, filling the air with tension. Holly took a deep breath considering her options. She could leave her task unfinished and seek out the safety of her co-workers near the front of the store, or she could investigate further. I Mustering her courage, she moved toward the source of the footsteps, her own steps cautious on the linoleum floor. As she rounded the corner of the aisle, she stopped dead in her tracks. The end cap display, which she had checked not ten minutes earlier, was now on the ground, its contents strewn across the floor. Holly felt a chill run down her spine. There was no way the display could have fallen on its own. It was set up securely, and nothing she'd heard could have explained it toppling over without human or substantial physical interference. Her mind raced, considering all logical explanations. Perhaps an animal had snuck in, or there was a structural issue with the shelf. But deep down, she knew the truth was something far less mundane. As she stood there, contemplating her next move, the lights above flickered one final time before plunging her into complete darkness. The story of Holly in Walmart was far from over, her night shift turning into a nightmare she could never have anticipated. In the consuming blackness of the store, with the storm raging outside, Holly realized she was not alone. And whatever was with her in the dark was not just a figment of her imagination. In the suffocating darkness of the Walmart, Holly's breath became shallow and quick. Her hands trembled as she fumbled with the box cutter, trying to keep it steady in her grip. The only sounds were the distant rumblings of the storm outside and her own heartbeat pounding in her ears. Desperately, Holly reached into her pocket for her phone, hoping its light could guide her. With a shaky hand, she activated the flashlight feature, casting a narrow beam of light that sliced through the darkness. The aisle ahead was a mess of scattered products and broken pieces from the fallen display. As she swept the light around, she caught a glimpse of something, or someone, moving at the far end of the aisle. It was too quick to see clearly, but it was unmistakably the figure of a person. Holly's voice caught in her throat as she tried to call out again, her voice barely above a whisper. Who's there? There was no answer, only the sound of her own breathing and the faint noise of movement somewhere in the darkness. Holly decided she couldn't stay where she was, 
She needed to get to the front of the store, to safety. Gripping her phone tightly, she began to make her way back toward the main aisles, her every sense alert. As she moved, the light from her phone flickered erratically, the battery drained dangerously low by the flashlight app. With each step, the darkness seemed to press closer, as if it were alive, pulsing with malevolent intent. Holly's fear escalated as she heard the footsteps again, this time following her. They were deliberate and heavy, echoing through the empty store. Her pace quickened to a near run, the beam of light from her phone bouncing wildly as she navigated through the aisles. The footsteps behind her matched her pace, growing louder and closer with every second. In a panic, Holly rounded a corner too sharply, colliding with a shelf and sending products crashing to the floor. The noise was deafening in the silence of the store, and for a moment, the footsteps stopped. Holly scrambled to her feet, her side aching from the impact, and continued her frantic dash toward the front. The emergency exit lights should have been visible by now, but all she could see was darkness. The realization hit her with terrifying clarity. The power outage had disabled the emergency lights, plunging the entire store into an unnatural blackout. Just as she reached the front end of the store, her phone died, leaving her in complete darkness. She stopped, disoriented, trying to remember the layout of the checkout area. That's when she heard it, a low, menacing growl right behind her. The sound was unlike anything human. It was guttural and filled with hunger. Frozen with terror, Holly could feel the presence of whatever was behind her. She could hear its ragged breathing, feel the heat of it on the back of her neck. She knew she should move, run, scream, anything to escape, but fear rooted her to the spot. Then, the creature spoke in a voice that was a distorted echo of human speech, filled with malice and amusement. Found you, it hissed. As the creature's hands closed around her, Holly's scream finally tore through the silence of the Walmart. It echoed through the empty store, a desperate sound that went unanswered. The darkness consumed her, along with her fears, as the storm continued to rage outside, indifferent to the horrors unfolding within. In the days that followed, Holly's disappearance from the late-night shift at Walmart became a chilling mystery. The store's security cameras had failed during the blackout, leaving no evidence of her fate. Her colleagues and the local community were left to wonder and fear, as the memory of Holly haunted the now brightly lit aisles of the Walmart, a stark reminder of the night the lights went out. It was just past midnight when Alex decided to make a quick run to the local Walmart. Working late shifts as a nurse often meant his shopping hours were unconventional, a quiet time when the store's fluorescent lights buzzed over empty aisles and scattered late-night shoppers. The usual bustle of daytime was replaced by a more subdued, almost eerie atmosphere, but Alex found the solitude more convenient than creepy. Upon arriving, he grabbed a cart and began weaving through the aisles, picking up essentials, some groceries, toiletries, and a few snacks for his next shift. The store was sparsely populated at this hour, a couple of tired-looking parents with a restless child, a young couple laughing quietly over a shared joke in the snack aisle, and an elderly man slowly pushing his cart, inspecting each item carefully before making a selection. As Alex turned into the cleaning supplies aisle, he noticed something odd, a trail of liquid on the floor, reflecting the harsh overhead lights. Initially, he thought it was a spilled product, common enough in a busy store, but the trail seemed to stretch down the entire aisle, weaving between the shelves. Curiosity peaked, he followed it, his eyes tracking the shiny path until it led him to an aisle he rarely visited, the pet supplies section. The trail didn't stop there. Instead, it turned abruptly and continued down another aisle. This was unusual, and a chill ran down Alex's spine, not from fear, but from the cold air blasting from a nearby freezer section that he had approached. He hesitated, wondering if he should alert a staff member, but his desire to solve the mystery urged him on. Following the trail further, Alex noticed it was getting thicker, more viscous. It looked less like a cleaning product and more unsettlingly similar to, though he tried to dismiss the thought, blood. It was then that he realized the store had grown unnervingly quiet. The usual sounds of late night restocking, the low murmur of music over the store's sound system, even the distant chatter of the few shoppers, seemed to have faded away, as if the store were holding its breath. He found himself standing at the end of the frozen food section, where the trail culminated in a small, darkened area behind the last freezer. 
which was slightly ajar. The dim light from within the freezer illuminated something on the floor, something that definitely wasn't supposed to be there. Alex's nursing instincts kicked in. He approached slowly, a sense of dread building with each step. As he drew closer, the shape on the ground became unmistakably clear. A person, lying face down, unmoving. Alex rushed forward, checking for any signs of life. There was no response. Panic set in. He pulled out his phone to call 911, but as he dialed, he heard a noise, a soft shuffling sound coming from the next aisle. Frozen, phone in hand, he listened as the sound grew louder, more deliberate. Someone, or something, was moving towards him, hidden just beyond the shelves. The story of Alex's late night shopping trip had taken a dark turn into a real life horror scene. As he stood there, deciding whether to confront the approaching figure or seek help, the lights in the store flickered ominously, casting long shadows that twisted around him, blurring the line between the ordinary and the terrifying. The Walmart, a place of commerce and convenience, had transformed into a stage for a chilling mystery that Alex was now part of. Alex's heart pounded in his chest as the shuffling grew closer. Clutching his phone, he debated his next move. The logical part of him screamed to run, to get out and wait for help in a safe place. But as a nurse, his instinct to assist overpowered his fear. He pressed the call button, speaking quickly to the dispatcher, relaying his location and the situation in hushed, urgent tones. As he waited for help to arrive, the shuffling sound stopped abruptly. Silence fell over the aisle, thick and heavy, broken only by Alex's labored breathing. He tightened his grip on his phone, using the other hand to slowly edge the freezer door further open for more light, hoping to catch a glimpse of whoever, or whatever, was out there. Suddenly, the lights in the store flickered again, then went out completely, plunging Alex into darkness. The only light now came from the dim glow of his phone screen. His heart skipped as the eerie quiet was shattered by a low, guttural growl from the next dial over. The sound was not human. It was primal and filled with a menacing promise. Panic surged through Alex as the growl grew into a snarl. He stepped back, bumping into the freezer, the cold metal a stark contrast to the sweat on his back. He knew he should move, hide, or find a weapon, but fear rooted him to the spot. Then, in a flash of emergency lights that flickered back to life, Alex saw it. A figure, large and looming, with matted hair and wild, crazed eyes. It wasn't the figure of a man he saw earlier. This was something else, something feral. It stood at the end of the aisle, watching him, its chest heaving with ragged breaths. The figure took a step forward, and Alex, spurred by a surge of adrenaline, turned and ran. He sprinted down the aisle, the sound of his pursuer's footsteps thundering after him. He ducked and weaved through the aisles, knocking over a display to hinder his chaser. He could hear the figure scrambling over the obstacle, its determination to catch him clear in the speed of its pursuit. Alex rounded a corner and crashed into a shelf, sending products flying. Pain shot through his shoulder, but he pushed through it, desperation lending him speed. He could see the front of the store now, the exit doors in sight, illuminated by the flickering emergency lights. Just as he neared the exit, a loud crash behind him signaled that his pursuer was too close. Alex glanced back and saw the figure almost upon him, its face twisted in a feral snarl. He pushed himself harder, sprinting the last few feet to the doors. He slammed into the doors, bursting out into the cool night air. Behind him, the doors closed with a thud, and he heard the distinct sound of the figure slamming against them. Alex didn't stop to look back. He ran across the parking lot towards the street, towards the lights of approaching police cars. The sirens wailed in the night as Alex collapsed on the curb, his breath ragged, his body shaking. The police took over, entering the building with drawn weapons. After what felt like an eternity, they emerged without having found anyone or anything. The store was declared clear, but the mystery of the figure and the body remained unsolved. Haunted by the night's events, Alex could never bring himself to return to that Walmart, and eventually, he moved away from the town. The story of that night circulated among the locals, a chilling reminder of the terror that lurked in the aisles of the ordinary. The Walmart continued to operate, but for many, it would always be the scene of an unexplained horror that left a lasting mark on the community. It was a late Thursday evening when Jenna decided to stop by her local Walmart for a quick grocery run. The store, 
located on the outskirts of a small town, often saw a drop in foot traffic as the night deepened, providing a quiet, almost serene shopping experience. Jenna, a single mother and a night shift nurse, found these late hours worked best for her hectic schedule. As Jenna entered the store, she felt the familiar blast of air conditioning against her skin, a welcome relief from the humid summer night outside. The bright fluorescent lights flickered overhead, illuminating the long, deserted aisles. Jenna grabbed a cart and began her routine, moving through the produce section, then to dairy, and finally towards the back of the store, where the cleaning supplies were kept. The silence was punctuated only by the soft hum of the freezers and the distant beep of a lone cashier handling another late-night shopper. Jenna appreciated the quiet. It gave her a chance to think and unwind after a long day. As she turned into the cleaning aisle, however, her sense of calm was interrupted by a sudden sharp noise, a loud crash that echoed through the near-empty store. Startled, Jenna paused, listening. She considered the possibility of a staff member restocking shelves, perhaps dropping a box. But as she waited for any follow-up sounds, voices or footsteps, nothing came. The store fell back into silence, almost oppressively so. Curiosity peaked, and feeling a bit uneasy, Jenna moved her cart forward toward the source of the noise. As she reached the end of the aisle, she peered around the corner into the next one. What she saw stopped her in her tracks. A row of shelves had collapsed and products were scattered across the floor in disarray. However, there was no sign of anyone around. No store employee, no fallen ladder, nothing that could easily explain the disturbance. A chill ran down Jenna's spine as she considered her next steps. She knew she should probably head to the front of the store, find an employee, and report what she'd seen. As she turned to leave, however, another sound captured her attention. A soft, almost imperceptible whimpering that seemed to come from beneath the collapsed shelving. Jenna paused, her instincts as a nurse kicking in. The whimpering continued, weak and pained, and she realized someone might be hurt. Abandoning her cart, she quickly approached the wreckage, her phone's flashlight cutting through the darkness that the aisle's overhead lights failed to illuminate fully. Hello? Jenna called out softly, approaching the source of the sounds. Is someone there? Can you hear me? The whimpering stopped momentarily, then resumed, this time with a faint call for help. Adrenaline surged through Jenna's veins as she began to carefully remove debris, trying to locate the injured person. Boxes and products moved aside, she finally saw a hand reaching out through the mess, grasping weakly. Jenna immediately reached for the hand, her voice soothing. It's okay, I'm here to help you, we'll get you out. As she cleared the last few items, Jenna was able to see the person a young woman, pale and visibly frightened, but conscious. What happened? Jenna asked, assessing the woman for any visible injuries. I... I don't know, the woman stammered, her voice shaking. I was just looking for something and everything came down, it happened so fast. As Jenna helped the woman sit up, ensuring she wasn't seriously injured, a creeping unease settled over her. The store was supposed to be safe, a familiar, controlled environment. Yet here they were, amidst a scene that suggested something else, something more sinister than a simple accident. With the woman now stable but shaken, Jenna knew they needed to get to safety and alert the store officials. Helping the woman to her feet, they began to make their way to the front of the store. Jenna kept her phone's flashlight on, casting long shadows behind the shelves. As they walked, Jenna couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched the weight of unseen eyes upon them growing heavier with each step towards the dimly lit front of the store. The story of Jenna's late night trip to Walmart was far from over, her initial errand forgotten as they moved through the increasingly oppressive atmosphere of the store. As Jenna and the young woman made their way to the front of the store, the eerie quiet seemed to amplify every sound. The soft squeak of Jenna's sneakers on the linoleum floor, their shallow breaths, and the distant, monotonous beep of the cashier scanning items for the night's last customers. The fluorescent lights above flickered intermittently, casting sporadic shadows on the walls and floor, adding to the growing tension between them. Jenna kept glancing over her shoulder, the feeling of being watched growing stronger with every step. She tried to dismiss it as nerves, but the air felt thicker, charged with a silent, foreboding energy. They reached the customer service desk, and Jenna gently helped the woman sit in a nearby chair. Quickly, she approached the counter to call for help. 
However, she found the area deserted, the employee likely in the back room or addressing tasks elsewhere in the store. Jenna spotted a phone at the desk. Before she could reach for it, the overhead lights in the front of the store flickered violently and then went out, plunging them into darkness. The only illumination now came from the emergency exit signs glowing eerily in the distance and her phone's flashlight, which suddenly seemed woefully inadequate. The young woman whimpered in fear. What's happening? I'm not sure, but we'll be okay, Jenna replied, her voice steady though her heart raced. She fumbled with the store phone, trying to dial out. However, there was no dial tone, only a soft, unsettling static that filled the silence ominously. Feeling a mix of duty to protect the injured woman and a desperate need for safety, Jenna decided they needed to leave the store immediately. She returned to the young woman, grabbing her hand firmly. We need to get out now, she said, pulling her gently toward the nearest exit. As they walked, the static from the phone seemed to follow them, growing louder, morphing into a low, indiscernible whisper. The shadows around them seemed to move, stretching and twisting into strange, frightening shapes. Jenna's mind raced with panic as she tried to focus on finding a way out. Suddenly, a loud crash echoed behind them. Another aisle of products had toppled over, blocking part of the path to the exit. Jenna took a quick detour to another aisle, her heart pounding as the sense of urgency increased. The whispers grew into voices now, multiple voices, murmuring words she couldn't quite understand. They reached the front doors and Jenna pushed against them, expecting to burst into the safety of the outside world. But the doors didn't budge. They were locked, trapping them inside. The realization hit Jenna like a physical blow, her breath catching in her throat as panic threatened to overwhelm her. Turning around, she shone her phone's flashlight back into the store. The light flickered across what seemed like hundreds of eyes reflecting back at them from the darkness, watching from the shadows. Jenna gasped, the phone slipping from her trembling hands and clattering to the floor. The young woman clung to her, crying softly, Please, don't let them get us. Jenna, frozen in fear, could only watch as the shadows began to move toward them, the whispers coalescing into a cacophonous chant. Just as the shadows were about to envelop them, the emergency lights flickered back on, casting the store in a harsh red glow. But it was too late. The shadows surged forward, swallowing everything in their path. Yeah, no the next morning, the store manager found the front doors unlocked, the store in disarray. Aisle after aisle lay in ruins, products strewn about in chaotic heaps. Jenna and the young woman were nowhere to be found. The only sign that Jenna had ever been there was her dropped phone, its battery dead, the last video recording nothing but static and shadows. The mystery of what happened in the Walmart that night remained unsolved, spoken of in hushed tones by townsfolk and whispered about by employees for years to come. The store itself seemed forever changed. Some nights, if you listened closely, you could still hear the soft, eerie whispers echoing through the aisles. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video, 